All right, Christina, I got noon Eastern. Is it okay if I go ahead and get this party started officially? Yeah, let's go. All right, awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, probably to most of you, actually. Uh, and if you're watching this as a recording, I hope you're having a good day no matter when and where you are. We are here to talk about how to simplify your social fundraising. That's right. We're going to be talking about how to make your next uh, online giving campaign really stand out. So thanks for joining us. Awesome to see a full room here uh, on a lovely April Thursday. Um, I'm Steven. I'm over here at Boomerang, and I'll be moderating today's uh, little discussion. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Just want to let you all know that we are recording this session. And we'll be sending out the recording as well as the slides later on this afternoon. So if you have to leave early, maybe get interrupted, or uh, you just want to share it with a colleague or a friend, uh, just be on the lookout for an email from Boomerang with all those goodies um, in that email. We got an awesome uh, worksheet from Christina as well that we'll send out. Uh, but most importantly, we love for these sessions to be interactive. So feel free to ask questions and make comments along the way. There's a chat box and a Q&A box. You can use either of those. Uh, introduce yourself in the chat if you have not already. We'd love to know more about you. Um, and like I said, we love for these sessions to be interactive. So we're going to save some time at the end for a little bit of Q&A. Uh, if you have a specific question, it might be a little more visible to us in the Q&A box. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at both for sure. You can also send us a tweet. We'll keep an eye on Twitter throughout the hour. But bottom line is we would love to hear from you. So do not be shy, don't sit on those hands. Uh, if this is your first Bloomerang webinar, welcome. We do these webinars just about every single Thursday throughout the year. We literally do like 49 or 50 sessions. We love it every Thursday. We have a great guest and today is by no means an exception. Uh, but if you've never heard of Bloomerang, you're wondering what the heck we are. In addition to these webinars, we are uh, primarily a provider of donor management software. That's what Bloomerang is. It's a donor database product. Check it out if you are interested in that. Maybe you're shopping sometime soon. We're pretty easy to find. You can find us online. We've got lots of awesome resources on our website, videos you can watch to get a little bit of a sense of what we're all about. So check us out if you're interested. But don't do that right now. At least wait an hour because, uh, man, I've been excited for this one. Uh, my pal, Christina Edwards, joining us from beautiful Atlanta is here. Christina, how are you doing? You doing okay? I am excited. I'm ready to go. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, we've been chatting about this session for quite some time. It's been circled on my, my calendar uh, for, for that amount of time. And uh, like I said, you all are a retreat. If you don't know Christina, check her out over at Splendid Consulting. Like I said, she's down in Atlanta, but helps uh, tons of nonprofits across various cause types uh, improve you know, all aspects of their online marketing, their online fundraising. She's got some really awesome courses available uh, I think they're on demand, right, Christina? And, and they're also scheduled out that you can join. Yes, and yes, yeah. that is the name of the game. Like saving time, don't wait, do the thing you need to do now, right? Yeah, yes. really cool topics. There's things about like, how to use Canva and storytelling tips. Uh, we'll link to all that. And she's got some cool free resources, some templates and calendars uh, on her website as well. So I hope you'll connect with her afterwards. Uh, like I said, super involved in her community down in Atlanta. And um, I'm really excited for you all to, to hear from her. So I'm gonna pipe down because it's not about me, it's about Christina. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Christina, I'll let you uh, bring up your, your beautiful slides and then the, the floor will be yours. Awesome. All right, like here we go. Cool. Take it away, my friend. Okay. Well, hey everyone, welcome. You're here for Social Fundraising Simplified. We're going to use the chat today, as Stephen said. So pop that up, grab a pen, grab a paper. We're going to be together about an hour. Okay. I'm going to tell you a bit about me and we're going to dive right into the content today. Okay. So I'm Christina Edwards. I am based in Atlanta. I'm a nonprofit marketing coach. I am all about two things for your organization. I'm all about raising visibility, right? So we can get more eyeballs on what it is you do so that you can, second thing, drive revenue, okay? So anything in that marketing, communications, and online fundraising space is my jam, okay? So that's, that's the name of the game today. That is what we're going to talk about. I tend to work with organizations, I like to say, that fall into these buckets, okay? You might be at the 100K, the 500K, or the million plus. What got you here won't get you there, okay? <laughs> You've got these revenue plateaus. You're like, all right, we're at a million again. We're at a million again. Okay, now what? Or maybe I feel like I'm going to the same supporter or donor pool over and over and over again, right? That's when we need to add some new systems, add some new strategies into what you're doing to open up who you're reaching. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, this is your friendly reminder. If you can, turn off no notifications on your phone. 
grab a pen and notebook, change, close out that email on your, on your desktop, right? In your laptop, any of those bings and tings, right? Use the chat, ask questions, don't be shy. I'll tell you a bit at the end about how we can deepen this work together. For now, I've got a really great free resource for you. Hey, Adele from South Africa, amazing. So if you go to splendidcourses.com forward slash calendar, I've got a free social good calendar for you. We are talking about social fundraising. We're doing that online. We're doing that on email. We're doing that on social media. This calendar is an excellent tool for you to go, okay, Christina, how do I social fundraise? What should my organization talk about? This is one of my favorite freebies because you can look at this at a glance, it's broken up by quarter and say, oh, okay, it's actually National Volunteer Week. Let's do social fundraiser in honor of that, right? So grab this tool for your <laughs> upcoming social calendar, okay? So here's the deal. We're online now more than ever, and that's not going away. I think there was a moment in time where we thought, okay, shutdown happened. We'll go back to normal in a second. But really what we saw is that now more than ever, it's not a nice to have, it's a need to have to show up online, okay? So I wanna know in the chat, tell me this, when I think about social fundraising, I feel, and you can just type in how you feel. <clears throat> Do you feel excited, overwhelmed, stressed? Okay, lots of overwhelm, lots of stress. Okay, this one I love, messaging goes out into the void. That is a huge one, right? Which is, I blast out posts into the universe and where is everybody? Tired, anxious, need to know more. Every once in a while, I get somebody in the chat who says, I love it, I love it, right? Those are my people too. If you love it, you're going to level up today. And if you're anxious, overwhelmed, feeling uneasy, feeling stressed, this is going to be amazing for you. So tell me if these sound familiar or sound like you. Maybe you feel like last year was a fundraising roller coaster and you don't even like roller coasters, right? If that's you, you can type in a yes. <laughs> or maybe you've tried fundraising on social media before. This is the big one, right? that donations and engagement were nearly non-existent. This is where you're like, I am sharing the thing, I'm talking about the thing, I'm asking people to take action and they're not, right? And you feel like you're doing all of this upfront work, you're on this content ha hamster wheel and no one's really engaging, right? And it's, it's a lonely place to be and it's a burnout place to be because you're spending all this time doing the thing and no one's, and you're not seeing the ROI, right? You're not reaching your goal. I see a lot of yeses, Definitely hard to drive engagement, Zach says. Yes, avalanche at first and then silence. Okay, the avalanche at first is probably when you get a, you get what I call your, your fierce champions and advocates, you know, those superstar volunteers, those superstar supporters, they're like, yes, we're all in. And then that's it, right? It goes super quiet. So the point is, let's get more of them. How do we get more of them? Let's multiply that, okay? So let's address some myths and we're gonna continue to do this throughout today's training, okay? These are some big myths that I see, and I want you to <laughs> type in the chat as someone stand out to you. And you're going to see here, I put workbook page three over here. You're going to see little prompts throughout this. I'm going to type this in the chat, okay? This is a workbook that you can go alongside and type in as you're with me on the webinar today. Or what I like you to do is be super present for the webinar and go back and revisit the workbook after the webinar, okay? So that is there as a backup resource. So you'll see little prompts throughout, okay? So which one resonates with you? There's little ROI on, online. This is a big one. This one really, what's the word? Makes me feel salty because I'm such a, I'm so, uh, what's the word? I'm such a fierce advocate for marketing, right? I'm so passionate about marketing and showing up online that I'm like, yes, there is huge ROI online. We see that with Charity Water. We see that with some of the big players who are fundraising a lot online. Our audience prefers direct mail, okay? I hear that one, especially with organizations that are past that like 10 year mark. It's too hard to stand out. I don't have time. This one is a big one. Do we need to start a TikTok, a clubhouse, a Snapchat? Every donor wants a personal touch, or maybe I'm terrible at social media, right? I'm not a good writer. Okay. I'm seeing our audience. I want to use social media, how to stand out. Our donors aren't on social media. If your donors aren't on social media, that shows me you got to widen, widen your donor and supporter base, okay? <clears throat> Here's the thing. The, the basis of social fundraising is that it's rooted in what I call social action, okay? The entire reason why we're showing up on Instagram, we're showing up on Facebook, LinkedIn, your email newsletter is so that people will do the thing, right? They'll take the action. Social action is what I personally define as some of these characteristics, right? 
We want people to volunteer. We want them to buy a ticket to that big annual event. We want them to become a partner or an ambassador. We want them to hit the subscribe button or the follow button, share and engage. Share means click share on your, their post, your post, comment on your post, right? And then of course, the almighty one we want them to do, make a donation, right? These are all of the action pieces, right? This is the why. We, don't, we never wanna just spend a bunch of time creating content for the sake of content, you know, creating content, right? Keeping the lights on. No, we want to go, okay, why are we doing this? We're doing this for one of these accomplishments, okay? But what we see year over year, and this is to, to, to debunk that myth about, you know, there's no ROI online, that kind of thing. When we look at Giving Tuesday, we've got great stats for Giving Tuesday. That is why I lean on Giving Tuesday for this illustration. Year over year, we see an increase in what I'm calling social action, okay? We see more people show up, more people donate, and more funds raised. But... What I don't want you to do is go exactly. That's why we do a social fundraiser every Giving Tuesday, okay? What it, I want you to do instead is I want you to go, okay, I need to fundraise more than one day a year. What about these 364 days of the year? Where can I social fundraise, okay? So here's an interesting stat. 75% of Instagram users have taken an action such as visiting a website after looking at an Instagram advertising post. I'm wondering if you have ever seen an Instagram ad post or a Facebook ad or something like that and actually bought the thing, okay? You've actually gone, yep, I'm buying the thing. Yeah, I know I have. I know I absolutely have. I wanna make sure that, yeah. Okay, Sarah says, I buy so much on Instagram. Exactly. We're seeing a lot of people take action on Instagram and that is cold traffic, right? That is an ad. So think about it when it's warmed up and I'll, I'll show you what I mean with some examples, okay? Okay, so we have three main goals for today, okay? I want us to go past the consumption piece on this webinar together. Okay, I want you to go into action. The first piece is the awareness piece, <coughs> okay? That is opening up your mind into what's possible for your organization when it comes to social fundraising. That's the curiosity piece, that's the next level. Okay, could we do this? Excuse me, I'm going to take a cough drop. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, guys. One more. All right. I'm nursing the end of a cough here. Okay. And then the action piece. So the first piece is fast track fundraising. All right. This is a sales funnel. Okay. This is the long game. So tell me in the chat, if you've ever sat on a webinar and heard about a sales funnel. Oh boy. Excuse me. Okay. So it's just that awareness piece of going from having never heard of your brand to her hearing of your brand, liking, knowing, trusting. So some examples of what I'm calling the long game would be direct mail, cold Facebook ads, grants, annual events. These are amazing. And I don't want you to stop doing them. I want you to keep doing them, but I want you to have a social fundraiser plan rocking and rolling in the background. So the long game is like the turtle here, okay? He's going, he's going, he's going slow, okay? This is a social fundraiser. Is it gonna play for you? It's not gonna play? Play. Ah, the cheetah. This is my goal for your organization, okay? <clears throat> We're fast tracking. So instead of it taking months or years, people are going through that awareness phase, liking and knowing your organization, very, very quickly. Some examples of this would be social giving campaigns, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, influencer marketing, partnerships, email and social marketing. That's when people can fast track through your funnel. Tell me if that makes sense in the chat. Yes, okay, awesome. <clears throat> so the mistake that I'm seeing is you're not meeting people where you are. You've got your direct mail piece. That's amazing. I want you to keep doing that. but. We've got to start cultivating a group 
outside of that audience, okay? Meeting them where they are digitally. Here's an interesting stat for you. Americans spend an average of 5.4 hours on their phones daily. Tell me if that's surprising to you. Yeah, totally. So if we're on our phones all the time, then that tells me we need to prioritize showing up and having a presence online, okay, and growing that community. So let's look at some mistakes that I'm seeing. These are some common mistakes on donation pages, okay? Okay, Abby says, my screen time can corroborate. Yes, totally. Okay, this, <laughs> this is a huge one. Oh, excuse me. Unnecessary friction. Making someone click through seven different screens before they can finally make a gift. Who has experienced this before? Maybe you're on Instagram and you click that link in bio, it takes you to another page, it takes you to another page, and you're chasing where you want to end up. Yes, exactly. It makes me crazy. Just let me give you my money. I want you to write this down. After today, I want you to audit your fundraising page. Where does <clears throat> your link in bio take you? Where does the donate button take you? How many clicks? Yes. So here are some examples of what I want you to do instead. Over here is an Instagram account. This is Pebble Tossers. They have a link in bio that is a link tree, okay? Like a landing page. You absolutely can do that, but this is an important distinction. When you are doing a social fundraiser, I want you to have one click or as very few clicks to take me from A to B. Okay. So for example, X books, this is a really great example. What they were doing here is they were fun <coughs> fundraising for a specific monthly giving program. So they swapped out their, their link in bio for a very specific, unique URL. Okay. That's what I want to see your organization do when you're fundraising. Now, when you're out of that fundraiser, when you're back to what we're calling evergreen content, then you can switch back to that link tree. So somebody said, what is the max number of clicks we should have? Okay. I would say <coughs> at the, as, as few as possible. Okay. As few as possible. Here's the other friction point. Maybe you have one, two, seven clicks, and then it takes me here. This is a huge point of friction. Tell me if this looks like your donation landing page. It's anonymous. It's not specific. This is not branded. I'm seeing some yeses, yes. The other piece is that it looks long and time consuming. It's not mobile friendly. Am I doing the pinch my screen to zoom in, right? It's not branded to a specific cause. Okay, this is how we see people leave, right? You know, in e-commerce, we call this abandoned cart. Okay, they're just gonna leave. This looks really confusing. Okay, we want something that's intuitive and easy to use. Make sense? Okay, seeing a lot of yeses. Mobile friendly design can increase donations by 126% on the average. I believe the stat is high today because more organizations are prioritizing being online, okay? You need to make sure when you're doing that audit that you, <coughs> excuse me, check your mobile phone. Did you have to pinch to zoom in, okay? Okay. So let's look at what I love about some donation landing pages. I love this because this image gets you right away. I know this is branded to a specific cause. I love that it's in bite-sized pieces. Okay, it looks very easy to use and very intuitive. Tell me if your nonprofit landing page looks like this. So with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we have this example of social proof. I'm going to show you why I love social proof and why it works really, really well with social fundraising. Okay. We also get what I call the momentum and how far is it, how far away are you from your goal? Okay. And we get the good kind of peer pressure. So let's look at some examples. When we see a big line of donors, 794 donors like this, that's when we see the good kind of peer pressure. This is social proof. These people are showing up to support this social fundraiser. I should too. Maybe I recognize some friends in here too, right? Great example here, okay? It also shows me how far away I am from the goal, okay? Again, I want to be part of that momentum, okay? I love this. <coughs> Another social proof, this is from Charity Water. 
they've done a couple things really, really well here. They've shared some stats. They've said spring members bring clean water to four. 45,897, people every single month, okay? This shows what we're doing is working. We have a lot of people here participating. You can do this by the impact of the program participants, the number of donors. This also creates that FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. We wanna be part of this. Here's a really beautiful example here. They did two things really, really well. They have a recently joined tab. That shows people are joining in real time. These are welcoming our new members. I love this. You could do this for a monthly giving program. This, this could be any sort of peer-to-peer. -peer. Okay, the next piece is celebrating an anniversary. I love this because this is the retention piece, okay? What we're doing is working and we are building our community of supporters, ambassadors, influencers, right? Are any of you celebrating your own ambassadors, your supporters, your influencers in this way, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, the slides are blurry for you. Hmm, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So here's another example, make it fun. This is one of my core values and they've done this really well. So if you're thinking about hosting a social fundraiser or asking your community to launch their own peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, opening up their idea of creativity. It doesn't have to be the same old peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, it could be, it could be, um, you know, something like a kickball tournament. It could be anything you want, right? It could be anything you want. And showing some examples like Travis and Ashley here, what they did, which is they asked for donations instead of wedding gifts, right? Or what Harry did, right? Or what EMC did, right? Showing some examples of social proof. This is how other people are working, okay? And then this one, if you can do video content, video content is amazing for showing that social proof that your programs work and to thank supporters. Again, here, this works really well because I can see how far away they are from reaching their goal. So now that you understand the social proof piece, we're gonna talk about removing and removing friction. We're gonna talk about debunking some of the myths I see. So I'm gonna give you a tale of two nonprofits. Tell me if you know this nonprofit, the big brand name nonprofit. This is Habitat for Humanity. It could be any nonprofit in your sector or niche, right? There's the big player, right? They've got a big community of supporters, okay? And you feel like they're known in, the, in your area as the big one. They're a thought leader, an industry expert, okay? Or maybe the small, mighty nonprofit. This is Erica. She runs you first here in Atlanta. It is grassroots, community-led. Fun fact about this band, Tyler Perry bought that band for her, okay, to do the work she does with people experiencing homelessness. There is, here's the question I have for you. You can just pop in the chat. Who do you think is better at online fundraising? Who's the better social fundraiser? Hey, Christina, I think you are muted some for some reason. Oh, sure. weird. Okay, go. both. It's not <laughs> a zero sum game. I'm going to say it again. Okay, it is not a zero sum game. And we're going to look at Giving Tuesday stats to support my argument that there is enough for everyone. So on Giving Tuesday, 34.8 million people participated on December 1st. That was a 29 increase year over year. Okay, this is growth in people showing up. What if more is more? And here's what I mean. Let's look at Giving Tuesday by the numbers, okay? We see an increase in revenue, we see an increase in donations, we see an increase in supporters year over year, but then they went and added a second Giving Tuesday in 2020, and a lot of organizations thought, oh no, one social fundraiser is going to take from the other social fundraiser, right? If we have two in a year, eek, but that's not what happened, okay? Instead, we saw 503 million gravy on top of that, so there's some really important key takeaways there, okay? First key takeaway is that you need more than one online giving day a year, okay? Don't do one. Remember, we wanna play these strategically throughout the year. Beth's asking when was the second case of giving Tuesday. I'm using this case study as an example. It was in 2020 as, <coughs> excuse me, as a, um, what's the word? 
response to the pandemic. They didn't do it again after, but it's a great case study and oh, more is more, but let's plan them strategically throughout the year. So the big, big mistake I'm seeing, and tell me if you're like, yeah, we're kind of doing this, is that you're not fundraising online enough, okay? Yeah, I'm seeing some trues, some yes, some guilties. Yeah, totally, it's okay. Yeah, that's okay. So we're gonna look at a fundraising calendar, okay? So let's look at a before and after, and this is what I want for you, okay? This is what I see a lot. An arbitrary calendar, right? Where we're like, eee, Giving Tuesday, that's our day, right? That's the day where we plan the big thing online, okay? Instead, I want it to look like this. This is an example of another social fundraising calendar where you look, okay, National Volunteer Week is in April. <clears throat> Let's do a week-long fundraiser there. Or on this one, this was a leap year. Maybe we do a one-day, silly, fun, cheeky leap year fundraiser. Or maybe we know September's our big gala month and we actually do an in-person thing and an online version of that, right? And instead of one day on Giving Tuesday, maybe do a, a stretch it out and we do a week-long fundraiser, okay? Here's the trick with this. These appeal to different audiences, okay? And I also want you to look at it as peaks and valleys. So we're segmenting this out potentially to different audiences. And remember, let's say, for example, we have a monthly giving launch, okay? 30 donors in 30 days. I love that. It's, on, it's, it's a container of something you're trying to do in 30 days, okay? So you plan that in June. Then you have a virtual 5K. Person that's going to do the virtual 5K might not have been the person that was interested in, be, in joining your monthly giving program, different audiences. <clears throat> then you have a Facebook-only challenge. And then maybe you have a two-week long fundraiser to really leverage ambassadors and influencers audiences. This is something I'm obsessed with, partnering with people to raise your own visibility. And then we've got that big, this is the big annual thing, right? So again, it's peaks and valleys. I think of these as like promos, you got the lead up, you've got the launch, and then we slow it down, give people a break. And remember, remember these are appealing to different audiences, okay? This is how we grow your donor base. This is how we avoid donor fatigue. I know we had some people in the beginning saying, our donors really prefer direct mail, okay? It's because you're not doing this, okay? So this is how we cultivate some more new folks. Pro tip, bonus points. I showed you some examples of people who have exceeded their fundraising goal. Let's say your fundraising goal is 100K, okay? You wanna raise 100K and you actually do it. And maybe you do it before your deadline. See, that's a lot. And you're like, all right, we're done. We did it. We raised our goal. That was it. Phew. No, here's what I want you to do. I want you to plant a stretch goal if you meet your initial goal. Okay, 100K is amazing. What could you do with 125? Okay, what could you do with that? Plan a stretch goal, articulate it, right? Take the figure, victory lap. Also celebrate it. Even if you don't want to plan a stretch goal, celebrate that you hit that milestone. I want to know in the chat if you feel like you're really doing that. You're taking the victory lap congratulating your community, thanking your supporters publicly and saying, we did this, or we can stretch our goal. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yes, we love celebrating. Yes, love the stretch goal. Yeah, build it in and get specific. Yes, amazing. Love that, Abby. Okay, now that you've seen what you need to turn up the volume and frequency on how often you start fundraise, I wanna show you how to stand out, okay? Okay, I want to suggest this. Paul says, thank you, Wednesday is a part of our Giving Tuesday. Paul, I love that. He's branded. He's beginning to brand Giving Tuesday as something that's longer than one day. I love that, Paul. Great. So let's talk about how to stand out. And if you're wondering how to stand out, if that's something that's, you're like, yeah, how do we do that? This part is for you. Okay, so pay attention. And I want to know in the chat, do you know who your target audience is online? I'm going to give you a moment. And I want you to actually describe them. Tell me who your target audience is online. You can say they're hyper-local, they're in your community, okay? Alumni, great. Families in our communities, local. No, Casey. Casey said any donor. Be, get more specific. Vanessa says 20 to 50 year olds. Okay, Vanessa, 20 to 50 year olds, that what? That's way large, okay? Jennifer says local, local who? Um, okay, Lori, so far, is the most specific widows and widow supporters, but widows and widow supporters that what? 
Tell me more. Douglas. Okay, Douglas might win on the spe specificity. Cyclists in our area, cyclists in his city, in his community. <coughs> Adela says foster families and organizations that support our cause. Okay, Vanessa says, okay, local women. Okay, this is the problem. This is what I'm hearing and seeing, right? Everyone, everyone is our target audience. No, okay. The reason why I don't want that to be your target audience is what's going to attract more core supporters, what's going to attract more followers, what's going to attract more people to take social action is not this big, vague, generic <clears throat> content, okay? You need to make specific content, like the example of widows and widow supporters, maybe in a specific area or cyclists in Atlanta, right? Think of the social content for cyclists in Atlanta. Very specific, very different than what we would say for people who support food insecurity, right? I want you to get drilled down, right? Because what's going to peak their ear is not going to peak their ear. So I want you to ask yourself, is what I'm posting new and different? Is it representing a unique voice? Is it clear, warm, and welcoming? Tell me in the chat if you feel like your content is those. Here's what I want to say. I want your content to be unique to your organization. So let's talk about orgs that help people who are experiencing homelessness, okay? There are a lot of orgs here in my city that do that. What is unique and different? What voice are you helping to represent, okay? What line are you drawing in the sand? That's what I want you to step into because when you do that, when you become a thought leader, I'm much more likely, likely as a consumer to share your content. I'm, it's going to hit and resonate with me. I want to make sure that your content doesn't look like anyone's content in your niche or sector, okay? I see some no's, some yeses. It could be better. Yes. So the mistake I'm seeing is that a lot of new supporters are tuning you out. And here's why they're tuning you out. Because if we look over here, this is Times Square. Look at all of these people, the types of causes, the types of content, the types of social fundraisers that will appeal to these people are different, okay? Think about our food insecure households, our cyclists, our widows and widow supporters. Very different content, right? So we wanna make sure we're calling those people out, okay? And we're, we're uniquely producing content and producing campaigns that appeal to them, okay? You don't wanna be for everyone. Who has heard that before, right? You wanna repel some people in order to, to attract more people, the right people. Yeah, I see some yeses, some could be betters. Yes, you're working on it. So I want to hear in the chat, this is the, if I can leave you with one thing today, this is the piece that I'm so passionate about, okay? Partners with ambassadors, brand champions, or influencers, those social media influencers. Do you have those partners online? I see some, I see a yes, a no, we don't, okay? I'm obsessed with influencer marketing for a reason. I come from the for-profit world. That's my secret, right? Is that I started an agency many, many years ago. I worked with so many for-profits. I started working with the nonprofits along the way. I found my sweet spot working with nonprofits. I said to myself, why aren't nonprofits doing the tools, the strategies these, these for-profits are making millions and billions with? Let's do that. So five years from today, you're going to hear a lot more about influencer marketing partnerships for nonprofits. But I don't want you to wait five years. I want you to do it now. Okay. Lots of no's. <coughs> Okay. Yes, partners. Did it. Yeah. Working on it. Not really. Knows. Okay. Here's why I want you to prioritize this. Here's how we get you off the revenue roller coaster. The ROI for influencer marketing is 5x every dollar spent. This is the best part, the best news. I don't want you to spend a dollar on influencer marketing. I want you to develop partnerships with the ambassadors who become your advocates, your fierce champions for your organization. Okay. So you're, you're investing your time in these relationships, but you're not investing paid ad dollars, okay? But you will see a huge return. The reason why we're seeing a huge return on that is because it leverages you out of your bubble, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so I see some, how do you find this people? Yes, we've started to work with the ambassadors. Yes, ambassadors. So the way that I define ambassadors is the ambassadors might be people who are your fierce champions, your supporters, your advocates, but they might not have a huge following online. And that is okay. That is a beautiful thing. 
They don't have to have hundreds of thousands of followers online to do an amazing job. And then we've got your influencers. Your influencers may have 50K, 100K, half a million followers online. I want both for you, okay? It's about having those strategic partnerships. You don't need hundreds of thousands of them. We just need a few to start your pilot program, okay? <coughs> so let's look at some examples, okay? So this is the Tender Foundation here on the left, okay? The Tender Foundation is an organization here in Atlanta, and they have two amazing ambassadors here, Betsy and Mary. They hosted a social fundraiser on behalf of the Tender Foundation. You can see that Betsy and Mary each have 716 followers, 1,400 followers, okay? Not a huge amount of followers, okay? But let's look at what they did. They hosted a diaper drive, okay? This could be a diaper drive. This could be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. This could be fundraising for a specific program. So use the diaper drive as the placeholder, right? They shared a couple of posts, okay, about that. And they were able to accomplish this. This is what I love. You do not need 100,000 followers to have profitable partnerships, okay? Beautiful example of an ambassador program. Really, really easy to get involved, okay? And this is great, what we call user-generated content. So for the particular organization, the Tender Foundation, great content for them to repost about what these two ambassadors were able to accomplish, okay? <clears throat> so not having what I call a social street team is slowing down your growth online, okay? Social street team is this ambassador program. I use it interchangeably with digital ambassador program. So whether or not you want to create an ambassadors like Mary and Betsy, or you want to start working with social media influencers, you can think of those foodie Instagram accounts or really anyone who is a thought leader in your community. This is where we see that 5X in ROI, okay? This is why you're like, hey, I'm blasting out content into the universe and no one's responding, okay? Because you're the only one talking. I want other people advocating and leveraging their own networks for you. Give me a yes if you're like, yes, that makes sense. Okay, yes. Valerie says, how do you partner with influencers without paying the money? Because they align with your cause, because they care. So I have another example in one of my other trainings where it's a mommy influencer with, I don't know, 10,000 followers. She's a lifestyle blogger. She's <coughs> local to a specific area. And she is an influencer partner for a local, local diaper bank. Okay. Great alignment. She has a plugged in community of other moms. We talked about that sales funnel, right? Who already like, know, and trust her. Okay. Already do. They've got a built in like, no trust factor. So when she says, Hey, they're, they're trying to raise 50 K to buy a van, her community of moms are like, all right, we want to help. We want to show up. Yes. Okay, David says social street team. So I'm going to talk about this concept. So I used to work at a concert venue, and this will give you a bit of con uh, context around that. And without fail, anytime ticket sales were really, really low, no one wants to go to a concert where like there's no one there, right? We'd call our street team, which was an actual in-person street team. Come give them a stack of flyers, tell them where to go in the city and promote the concert where we knew their audience, that particular band's fans hung out, right? Remember, we're trying to go specific. Where's our audience? Who's our audience? Without fail, anytime we saw this, we see a huge spike in ticket sales, okay? Work like a charm every time. I want you to do this digitally. So when I say ambassadors, I mean digital ambassadors, digital advocates, right? We're meeting people where they are, <laughs> but make it easy. Remember earlier when I said it has to be fun? It has to be easy. It's the huge distinction. This is where people get in the weeds about it. And sometimes they say to me, yeah, 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 we got that. We're doing that. I'm like, do you? Do you have that? Because it should not feel like committee work. It should not feel like a board member position, okay? So let's think about Mary and Betsy. They were able to do that. They were able to be great ambassadors, street teamers for the Tender Foundation without having to show up to a board meeting, without having to say, um, hey, I, I, I don't know what to say, or where should, I, where should I send people, or where's the donate button, or can you make me this thing, right? And nobody from that organization said to them, hey, will you host a fundraiser for us? And we don't really know what it's about, right? It's very done for you, swipeable. So there's a couple of ways you can do this, okay? You can create an ambassador toolkit where it's completely digital and they have graphic assets, it's done for you. They can do what's called swipe copy where they actually just cut and paste copy and share it on their own networks, right? It's easy. It's fun. They align with your organization. Okay. Here's the distinction with anything in the social fundraising space. You have to have peers 
to host peer fundraiser. So whether it's a peer to peer fundraiser, a social street team, a digital ambassador program, you need to have the people, right? So you have to start developing these partnerships now, okay? First, it's the partnership. It doesn't feel like committee work. It feels like it aligns with their brand values, right? Then it needs to be a two-way conversation and an exchange of value, okay? <clears throat> so let's recap. We talked about the awareness piece. You're like, oh, okay, I see now Christina's talking about. I see why it's valuable. I'm not going to stop the direct mail piece. I'm not going to stop some of the longer sales funnel pieces, but I'm also going to be rocking and rolling with the digital program now too. I'm curious about it. I want to try it. But this is the last piece, right? I want you to take action. I always say this on my webinars. Making the plan isn't the same as doing the plan, right? It's really, really easy to sit on a training and go, great idea, and then get that big wave of overwhelm or look at your to-do list and put this at the bottom. 5X. We can 5X, right? I look at that as your time spent. So you can sit here and I want you to think about your marketing content as a pie, right? If you're spending... 10 hours a week. Instead of 10 hours a week being spent on pushing out content, I want like half of that developing relationships with these ambassadors, with these street teamers. So you can see that ROI. Okay. Makes sense. And it frees you up off that overwhelm and that burnout. <coughs> okay. This, if you're not looking at the screen, pay attention. This is the goal. This is the goal. I found Elena recently. Did you not know Elena? I hadn't followed her before. I hadn't heard about her before. That's the most exciting thing is it shows me how many other Elenas are out there. This is Elena. She has 267,000 followers on Instagram. She says that she's a best-selling author, a podcast host, and a teacher. This is the part that I'm obsessed with. She aligns her brand, her brand, with these three organizations in her Instagram bio. Girls on Fire, <coughs> Free Food Kitchen, and on the side too. Okay. That is a beautiful thing. When she's saying these are the, these are the organizations that I support and you should too. These align with my values as a best-selling author, as a yoga teacher, as a thought leader, a podcast host, right? She's a fierce advocate. We see these fierce advocates a lot of times for the charity waters, the new story charities of the world, the bigger players, right? Not for Elena. I've not heard of these three organizations, right? It's amazing. Who is excited about this? Yes. It's so exciting because it shows the possibility, right? So when one of these organizations says, hey, we're trying to raise 50K for an upcoming program or we need X, Y, Z, can you help us? Here's a graphic to share. Here's a swipe copy. Here's the, <coughs> the link to the fundraising page. Done for you. Easy, fun, aligns with her values, right? She's a proud ambassador. She's a yes, she's in. Yes. Okay. Great point. Amazing idea. This is great for sure. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my program. If you have questions about what I've taught you so far, you can drop them in the chat. We'll have time for questions here. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my program, which you can join and get a $200 off when you join Social Impact Pro using the promo code Bloomerang. Okay. So Social Impact Pro is my signature course and program. So it's a combination of video, self-study. I talked to us even about this in the beginning. So you can fire hose through the content and go at your own pace. And then you can have monthly group coaching, right? We meet for three months. You'll get access to my swipe copy. If you're like, okay, I want to start my street team, but what the heck do I say to them to start that conversation? You can swipe my copy, my templates. If you're like, I wish my development team and my comms and my marketing team all were on the same page, I got you. I'll walk you through the modules. Module one is that branding launch pad. So if you feel like <coughs> what you're saying is really generic and vague, module one is for you. I got the antidote to that. Module two is all about campaigns that drive social action. So again, how do we get people to click the button to do the thing? I walk you through that. Module three is the street team. So whether it's ambassadors, influencers, a combination of both, I walk you through the process of doing two things. One, starting your program, getting people to say yes, and then, okay, they say said yes, but now what? How do I get people to, how often? What do I say? What do I say when it's time to run that campaign? <coughs> Excuse me. Module four is all about Instagram and Facebook mastery. Okay, I give you my best tips for those two platforms. Module five is the campaign launch from four weeks, zero, to launch in four weeks. And module six, I like to say, is the post run stretch. We did all this work to get all these new people in. How do we retain, how do we retain them? <coughs> so here's what you're gonna get inside. You'll get 
a mega loyal following of donors and supporters. So you're not going to the well over and over again. Okay. Grow past those revenue plateaus, just like my client, Rebecca. So she shares that when she, before the course, she raised about 2000 on giving Tuesday. Then she took the course. She followed the program. She's launched what's her pilot round of her street team. And she five X her goal. The best part about this is when she runs a spring campaign, summer campaign, she's already got her street team and she can just add onto it. I think of it like stocks, like we're just adding more people onto the team <laughs> or my client, Jeannie, who binged the course right away and went straight through it. So if you're like Jeannie and you're like, all right, and you want to, I'm all in, I want to go through all the modules. You can do it that way. Then we have some upcoming lessons. So we have three months of upcoming lessons because I'm obsessed with marketing. I'm obsessed with getting your organization, more eyeballs, more awareness, more action. So we're going to do one all about email subject lines. I personally have an over 40% open rate on my email list for a reason. I will teach you my formula. I will give you a hundred done for you subject lines. You can swipe. Then we're going to talk about LinkedIn because I feel like LinkedIn is a secret. Like people aren't really leveraging it and using it. So we're going to talk about LinkedIn and of course, influencer marketing. If you're sitting on here and you're like, this is great, but what about my organization, my unique cause? I have no idea how I would find influencers. We're going to have an in-person, I'm going to say like workshop style lesson. <clears throat> so I will drop this link in the chat and let you answer any, ask any questions you have about it. Hang on. Okay, there we go. And I want to talk to you about why now. I want you to think about your street team. You build it once and then you just keep adding numbers to it, okay? It compounds over time. Again, this isn't committee work. They, you don't feel like you're communicating with them all the time. I call it your dream team. You're rolling on and rolling off your dream team as you think of that launch campaign calendar. Why not make this the most profitable year yet while dialing down the stress and the burnout? Plus you get three months of new lessons, three months of group coaching. The reason I do it that way is so that you can get out of the gate and fast track your growth and success, okay? peer support and accountability. And that's what I've got for you today. Connect with me. You can find me at Splendid Consulting on Instagram. Hang out with me inside Amplify Social Impact Pro. Go to splendidcourses.com forward slash start. And make sure you download that free social good calendar. That's Splendid Courses forward slash calendar. Y'all, listen, my coughing fit ended. We made it through. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I saw somebody say, I wish she'd just clear her throat. I would if I could. But that's what I've got for you. We had we had to work with my cough and you know it happens. Real life webinars. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you Valerie. So, drop in any questions. If you have a question about about the training, let me know. If you have questions about the program, let me know and um yeah. Thanks Molly. Super helpful. Amazing. So glad to hear it. All right, Stephen. Yeah, awesome presentation. Thank you so much, Christina. And I actually downloaded that calendar this morning. I hope people will look at that because it's it's pretty cool. Um, and it's right there. It's free. So why not get it? Um, thank you, Christina. And thanks to all of you for hanging out. We probably got about maybe nine or 10 minutes for yeah. questions. So if you haven't asked a question, uh, do so now. We'll try to get to it before one o'clock Eastern. Um, here's one from Kathleen, uh, Christina. How do you okay. approach those potential ambassadors? What have you seen work for maybe those ambassadors, influencers? Is it just sliding into their DMs or uh, stalking them online or what do you do there? <laughs> so I say meet people where they are. So for example, if we're on Instagram and that's their platform of choice, like Elena, like don't send her an email, right? Meet her where she is. But before we slide into their DMs, which if you're like, what does she mean? Just direct message them, warm them up. This is a little bit like dating. So we don't want to just like ask someone to marry us right away, right? We're going to date a little. We're going to like treat this, I don't know, like Tinder or something. Like we're going to like, do you like me? Is this mutual? The way that we do that is first you follow them. You start to interact and engage with their content. This doesn't have to take months and months and months, right? But we're just saying like, I see you. I like what you do. I think it's cool. And then we start that conversation, okay? A lot of these Instagram influencers are used to people DMing them. It's a beautiful place to hang out, Okay. I will say if Instagram isn't your place, I recently worked with an organization and there was somebody that we were trying to reach and LinkedIn was the perfect place. I sent him a message through LinkedIn. He was immediately responsive. And I could tell this guy didn't have a presence on Instagram. Okay. That wasn't his, his platform of choice. Right. And we were able to make the ask that way. And it was a beautiful thing. And we sort of, we sort of had the conversation first, like, you know, is this working the dating? Right. And then we took it over to email and that was the next place. And then we took it to a zoom call. 
right? So meet people where they are. Okay, Patricia says, I'm gonna jump if that's okay, Stephen. Uh, can I invite board members to be part of a social street team? Yes, if they wanna be. <clears throat> if they have a desire to be, absolutely. There's no reason why not, but I do wanna think about your street team as expanding your bubble, right? Of going outside of just the board. Um, what else we got? I see not all of our donors share their email addresses. How do you encourage them to do so? So this is actually what I would call in marketing, like a lead magnet. Like what is the exchange of value we're giving them for their email address, if that makes sense. So if they're donating, I want to make sure that the only reason why you wouldn't get their email address if they're donating is maybe if they did it natively through Facebook or Instagram, I know that that's a big pain point. So if it's that, that might be it. And there, there isn't a whole lot we can do there. Sometimes we can message them through the app, through Messenger. But if it's something else, I want to make sure we're capturing, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you marketing speak, we're capturing that lead. So I do want you to have an email address opt-in if it's just through your website or something like that. I want you to start collecting email addresses. Now, if we think about it as far as a lead magnet, meaning I'm just Christina scrolling on your website, I do want you to have a lead magnet. I want you to give me a, a, an opportunity to learn more. I was checking out a website recently and they had a really great lead magnet that was specifically designed and catered to kids who wanted to fundraise right and so the lead magnet they had branded the program they had a great lead magnet that was like think here's um 10 ways that your kid can host a social fundraiser or something like that and as a parent that spoke to me because i'm like if this was interesting to me and i was thinking about having a fundraiser with my kid but I'm, it's Thursday. I'm not ready to do it right now. I'm going to type in my email address. I'm going to get some more information and they can put me through a nurture series that way. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Bethany says, I have a robust social media calendar that includes success stories. Awesome. Shout outs to sponsors, ways to get involved in fundraising, but our engagement and views are non-existent. How much do you recommend to boost and pay for ads? Do you recommend boosting for fewer posts or for longer. Okay, I actually don't recommend boosting generally because you don't get to drill down. Remember we talked about who your audience is for? You don't get to get super nerdy with the data. If you go to Facebook's ad, ad manager, you can get way more nerdy and drill down with the data, right? I can say, I am looking for parents of high schoolers in a specific zip code, super serious, super drill down. Um, the other piece that you said is that engagement and views are almost non-existent. <coughs> I don't know if that's a total problem. In general, you don't want to pay for ads unless you're running a specific campaign. Again, we have something that we're trying to get people to do. And I would rather you run some ads through Facebook Ads Manager and then really spend a lot of time getting outside of your bubble, right? So leveraging relationships, partners, and ambassadors to help advocate and say, hey, do you see what this organization is doing? So when you think about that sales funnel, I use my friend Muriel as an example because there was... I don't know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, she shared something on Instagram stories about an organization I had never heard of, why they were cool, what they were up to, and, a, and information to donate. I went through her, her funnel, that organization's funnel, in like, I don't know, a minute. I said, I like, I like, know, and trust Muriel, right? The next piece was, I like what this organization is doing, and I can make a donation very, very quickly, no friction, right? So I love that piece because had that organization maybe shared like a cold ad to me on Facebook or a cold ad, meaning I'd never heard of them before, I don't know that I would have taken the action. But because Muriel said, listen, friends, this organization is doing some cool stuff, it immediately gave me social proof. She not, likes, no and trusts it. I dig what they're doing. I'm in. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to. Anything else I missed, Stephen? I'm not seeing any more, Christina. Um, so why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, we'll give you the last word. How can folks um, get a hold of you? And uh, I know we got your contact info up here, but we'll give you the last word. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Come hang out with me at Splendid Consulting on Instagram. That's where I spend most time. And splendidcourses.com forward slash calendar. Opt into that. That will get you on my email newsletter list. And you can find out about my world and hang out with me that way. I would say the two places I'm very, very passionate. We didn't talk about email at all, 
but we talked about it a bit in the social action piece, right? Email is really, really important. Somebody asked a great question about it. Okay, how do I get them on my email list? Yes, we wanna get you them on your email list. So come hang out with me and I'll give you a lot more tools through that. Okay, wait, I, I see one more. Where do we find a supporter in a profile? Be Becky, I don't know if I totally understand that question. Do you understand that question, Stephen? No, okay. Where do we find a supporter in a profile? All right, send me a message after this, Be Becky, and let me know yeah, what you mean. Message, and, Becky. Yeah, and we'll we'll see if we can get that answered. Amazing. Thanks, y'all. Cool. If you start your pilot ambassador program, tag me in it, share me a message, tell me how it's going, right? And the other piece is, you know, I have some great examples on previous trainings and blog posts about, you know, these are people, there are people everywhere. There are foodie accounts, there are health and wellness accounts, there are trail runner accounts, right? These are people who already are fundraising for organizations. They're doing it right now, so why not yours, right? No one's asked them. A lot of times there are thought leaders out there who no one's asked them. They have a lot of brands that say, hey, do you wanna partner and do a paid post about these sneakers that we think you'll love to run the trail in? And they're like, yes, that's great. But what about the other organizations that are, they haven't asked them. This is the piece, I think five, 10 years from now, a lot more organizations are gonna be like, oh, right, 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 right. A lot of ROI there, do it now, okay? So do it now. Figure out what those organizations, what those brands, what those influencers would align best with you and start to make the ask, okay? Awesome. I couldn't think of a better way to end it. Um, Christina, thank you so much for fitting this into your schedule. I really yes. appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for having me. And thanks to all of you for hanging out with us for an hour or so uh, today. I know things are super busy in your world, so it's always nice to see a full room. If you can join us for the next webinar, we got a good one coming up for you next week, next Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, our friend Brooke Richie Babbage is going to join us and talk about how to scale. Maybe you're feeling a little stuck in uh, where you're where you're at in terms of maybe fundraising revenue. If you feel the organization isn't growing as fast as you want it to, that's what we're going to talk about. Listen, how to I have to give out. Brooke a shout out. She's yeah. amazing. She She's awesome. Awesome. So. I love her. You guys need to go to that. I'm going to go to that. <laughs> yeah, you better be. I'm going to look for your name in that chat, Christina. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a fun one. So register for that. Even if you know you can't make it, that's okay, because we'll send you the recording. Just like we're going to send you the recording uh, from this session, as well as uh, a cool cheat sheet that, uh, that, uh, that um, Christina sent over to me earlier this week. Yep. We'll include that. So be on the lookout for that, and hopefully we will see you again next week so have a good rest of your thursday have a good weekend stay safe stay healthy out there we need all of you doing uh the good work that you're doing doing out in the world and we will talk to you again next week bye now bye guys see ya